Muy importante. Yeah. <clears throat> We're honored to have uh, Sister Mary and praise God, Robert's mom with us, Sister Ray. Amen. Praise God. Ruby and Taylor and Elliot. Man. I'm sure oh, there's Elliot. Drifting in here. Oh, she's. <clears throat> Praise God. God is good. Yeah. I'm about ready for some springtime. Yeah. <laughs> There's some that are not here today because they are unable to be. I mention that frequently, but we need to remember those. Sister Krennic and Sister Cooper. Yeah. Keep those lifted up to the Lord in prayer. Just because you don't see somebody, don't forget about them. Right. They're a part of us. Amen. Remember the uh, folks in Ukraine? Amen. This morning, Brother uh, uh, Demon sent us around a video on the phone in uh, Sergey. How did I say his name right? Sergey? Sergey. Yeah. He's, uh, they were in our church here some months back. Years. <clears throat> hmm? Been a couple years, yeah. Couple of years. <laughs> That's some months. <laughs> lots of months. Oh, lots of months. Okay, lots of months. Amen. But uh, as I think all of us know, that Ukraine, that's Leonard's vacation spot. Don't <laughs> <laughs> embarrass him. Anyway, they are having war. And it's very, very serious. They really. Be lifting those folks up to the Lord in prayer. Amen. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, that we've never experienced anything like that right. here. And uh, I hope we never do. Amen. But it could very well happen. And, and we need to really, we've got to look beyond ourselves. Yes. And, you know, see the need beyond our own lives and people's uh, people what they're going through amen and keep them lifted up to the Lord in prayer seriously lift them up to the Lord in prayer with burden amen, amen. so we're going to get started this morning this is time where we uh, spend studying the word of the Lord all the kids are out there having Sunday school uh, we want to get into the word here and I uh, hope to say something to uh, draw you near to the Lord, help you to walk with Him. <clears throat> Praise God. So if you will stand, we'll start with a word of prayer. Brother Roland, why don't you lead us in a word of prayer this morning, if you would. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for the peace and blessings, Lord God. Thank you for what you're doing, Lord God. Bless this word. Bless Brother Rabbit. Touch your hearts and minds, Lord God, as we understand your word. Amen. Good morning, Brother Dwayne. Good morning, Pastor. You ride that motorcycle? No, sir. The G. The G. The G. Praise God. Amen. Please remember Brother D. Long, too. Amen. Praise God. Help me, kid. Even though if you're going to make a statement or something, that's fine, too. Praise God. We're going to look at our Bibles this morning to uh, Ephesians, the sixth chapter. <clears throat> We're going to read several verses of Scripture here. You just remain seated. Uh, praise God. We uh, have read these uh, not too long ago, actually. We went over some of this. But we're going to start at verse number 10. Paul, to the Christians at Ephesus, he says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. You know the devil has wiles. Strong defines it as tricks. Why is he's deceitful? Amen. 
I'm amazed at some folks that only seem like there is a devil. But in fact, there are people that don't believe there's a devil, but they believe there's a God. I don't know how you can do that. Because the same book that tells you there's a God is the one that tells you there's a devil. Amen. Amen. But he is a he's a deceiver. And uh, we need to be uh, not afraid of him, but we do need to be sober, be vigilant. That's what scriptures teach us. Because our adversary, he's our adversary, the devil, uh, walking about seeking whom he may devour. He's looking to devour somebody, right? But thankfully, greater is he that's in us, right? Than he that's in the world. But we don't want to fall prey to this stuff, right? <clears throat> we don't want to fall prey. And that's what Paul is exhorting the Christians here. He goes on to say, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood or people. Sometimes you think you are, but ultimately we're wrestling against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Some versions say in heavenly places because the enemy is the prince of the power of the air. That's what the Bible says. The Bible says he's the God of this world. Right? <coughs> We're wrestling against that. Do you ever think of yourself as wrestling against things that you can't see with your eyes? Not people. You just wrest. There's things you wrestle against. Yeah. Amen? <clears throat> Praise God. But if you're not aware that you're in a war, you're not aware that you have an adversary, if you're not conscious of that, uh, you know, you will find yourself falling prey to a lot of things. In fact, a lot of people, I believe, are, uh, struggle with depression because they fail to realize. Right. They fail to realize there's a spiritual force that is fighting and warring against us. A lot of the things that Jesus cast out in the Bible as devils in the Bible they are listed as sicknesses yes. and the diseases and they, and they are diseases <clears throat> you know they were they were called diseases in the Bible day. one woman I remember she was hunched over for many years yes. and Jesus attributed her affliction to Satan having bound her these many years yes. you know and uh he, don't get me wrong, everything's not a devil. Right, right, and people right. can go to that extreme too, you know. Everything's not a devil. There's nothing probably worse you can do than try to cast a devil out of somebody that don't have one. Right. You know, you can damage people that way. Amen. You really can. But there are, that's why we need to discern the spirits. Yeah. You know, which is a work of the spirit. But we wrestle against these things. There is an unseen world uh, that people are not conscious of oftentimes. And when we become Christians, the Bible gives us enlightenment, enlightenment uh, to, to help us to realize <clears throat> that there is this thing that wars against not just Christians, but especially Christians. You know, but mankind, mankind, and uh, Jesus is the answer. I'm thankful, according to the scriptures, that there are more that are for us than they that are against us. Yes. Amen. Amen. Right? Amen. There are more, as even as, as there are enemy things that are unseen that war against us. There are also things of God, angelic forces, powers, amen, that are uh, for God's people. Ministering spirits, it says, sent forth to minister for those that are heirs of eternal life. In Hebrews it says that. Amen. <clears throat> and, you know, if you, uh, if you read when Jesus dealt with kids, he said, their spirits uh, are always before the face of our Father, which is in the heaven. And 
you know, believe me to believe that there are uh, angelic, you know, forces that are on our behalf, you know, even little children, you know, and uh, they, their angels do behold the face of our Father which is in heaven continually. It says something along the line, that's not a, you can look it up, that's not a direct quote. <clears throat> but you don't see those neither with your eyes, but those things, those forces, good and evil, are are continuously at work, yeah. you know, in the spirit realm of things. We operate in the natural. Right. You know, we see people and stuff. And oftentimes those people that's giving you a hard time are actually just simply instruments of the force that is actually fighting against you. Amen? Whenever they hung Jesus on the cross, you know, Jesus said, Father, forgive them, talking to the people, yeah. for they know not what they do. They're ignorant of what they're doing, they're, what they're yielding themselves to. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Jesus had just previously said, now is the hour of darkness. Now is the prince of this world judged. You know, so there was those spiritual things, and Jesus allowed it to happen to fulfill what needed to be done to save us. Yeah. You know, yeah, sir. but uh, anyway, there are those forces that we we war against, we fight against, that fight against us, and uh, if you are not conscious of that. Uh, you will find yourself falling prey to many things that otherwise uh, you will not succumb to. Right. Amen? Amen. And you would maybe maybe you would not struggle so much, you know, because uh, the enemy likes to camouflage itself. Yes. You understand? The enemy likes to camouflage itself. It wants to divert. <laughs> your attention off of what is actually the problem. Right. Yeah. See, anyway, we got the Word of God that helps us to understand these things. And uh, again, we're not looking for devils behind every tree. You know? But there, there is an adversary. And so that's why Paul is telling these <coughs> Christians uh, that they need to put on the whole armor of God that they may stand against the wiles of the devil. And, and, and he explains to them, we're not wrestling against flesh and blood. We're not wrestling <laughs> against people, even though there is people oftentimes that, is yield, that are yielding themselves. Yeah. There's spiritual things going on right now against Ukraine. Yeah. Yeah. There are spiritual things. Yeah. And there are people, Putin, you know, is, being, is allowing the adversary and uh, to, 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 to cause the wars and stuff like that. Don't no tell them what the whole picture is. But it's not the goodness of God at work. Right. You know? <clears throat> Thank God his people are there and, and God's hand will be upon his people. Amen. And keep them. Uh, but it says that we wrestle against principalities and against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places, we're for taken to you, verse 13, we're for taken to you the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Stand therefore having your loins girt about the truth, having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you may be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. And this is the verse that I want to pay attention to. I hope you will take this to heart because. Even though there's always needs in people's lives, there are things that arise much like what's happening in Ukraine right now. Right. Okay? It's the evil day. 
It's the evil day. The cross was an evil day. Yeah. And sometimes we find ourselves where we face that evil day. The days are evil. You know, all the time, there's, the, the Bible says the whole world lies in wickedness. Mm -hmm. The whole world is in a fallen state, but there's, there's times Job had the evil day. Yes. Whenever those things happened to him, that was the evil day, <laughs> you know. And there will be times whenever people have that evil day, and you see them face that evil day. And you, you, you will see people, and as you live your life, you'll see people that are going through horrific things. Yeah. And that's that evil day. You know, it may be different circumstances, it may be different situations, it may be, you know, sickness, or maybe war, it may be a variety of things. But you got to know <clears throat> that it is the evil day that they are going through. That adversary, again, I'm not trying to exalt him. I'm just trying to uh, show, expose him. He walketh about seeking whom he may devour. That's what he does. Whenever the Lord asks Satan, where is, where is he going? He's not going, I'm going to and throw, fro, fro throughout the earth, walking up and down in it. That's what he's doing. And that's the one thing that he's trying to do is he seeking whom he may devour? Yeah. That's what he does. That's, he's bad. He's evil, right? Yeah. And whenever uh, he tries to approach somebody, that thing that their experiences is a, is the evil day. And that's when the Lord tells them, "said Having done all, to stand, yeah. right? Yeah. Stand therefore." And then he gives them the armor to put on. Amen. It's kind of like a war that's going on. You may have an adversary, but <clears throat> again, as Ukraine, they're actually going through the ad the adversary was already there, but the onslaught, the attack, has come to them. And again, that's that's the evil day, and and they're having to stand, right? Right. Amen. They're having to stand. And he, he tells them to, to stand, tells them things to put on. But then it tells us in Christ, the Christians, after having put on the, you know, have your feet shot with preparation of gospel of peace and the gird about with truth and the breastplate of rightness, all those things, the, the, the shield of faith, yeah. the sword of the spirit, this weapon, which is the word of God. He tells, he instructs these Ephesians says, praying always with all prayer and supplication. Everybody say in the Spirit. I'm talking about in the Holy Ghost. You know, you can pray, but then you can pray. Amen. You know? You can say, now lay me down to sleep. But when the evil day comes, it's going to take more than just now lay me down Amen. to sleep. Amen. 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 And if we would learn to pray in the Spirit, because things happen when you pray in the Spirit. And you don't need to pray in the Spirit just whenever you face the evil day, but you need to pray in the Spirit when others Amen. are going through the evil day. Right. You, can, you can pray those shallow prayers or you can really get down to business. And you can move mountains when you get down to business. You understand? I said when you really get down to business and pray in the spirit. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Amen, right? Amen. Jane, uh, or Jude said <clears throat> that we are to, to pray, keep ourselves in the love of God by praying in the spirit. Amen. Right? It is that place that you get. You know what I'm talking about. Any of you that have received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, and I think hopefully all of you have in this place, amen, you know that you don't always pray in the Spirit. 
Amen. You know? You know. I'm not saying God doesn't hear your prayers, but there's, the, there's an intensity, a depth to your prayer. Amen. And it's in that depth that we're talking about, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, that, that things actually happen when you get in that place of prayer. You don't get in that place of prayer without a burden. And it's not necessarily that you have to get into uh, trauma, but something's got to move you deeper, right. you know? Right. And it can simply be concern, concern. Not just for what you're going through, but what somebody else is going through. Because there's people, we call it intercession. Yeah. The scriptures speak of it being intercessory prayer. Amen? Praise God. And this is the verse that I want to focus on. It says, praying always with all prayer and supplication of the Spirit, watching thereunto with all perseverance. That means persistence. Persistency. <clears throat> with all perseverance and supplication, which means petition, for all saints. Amen. So after putting the armor on, he leaves us with the call to be intercessors. That's basically what he's doing. Right. And not just for ourselves, yes, for ourselves, whenever we're, there's a need there. Is that Amanda? Not I'm glad to see you. Hi, Adam. Praise God. Good to see all of them. Amen. Man, oh, man. Praise God. God is good. Yes. Amen. But God, I mean, Paul is telling the Christians, he's calling them to, to be awake, put on your armor, but intercede. Yes. He, he kind of, you know, finishes us off with telling us to be intercessors. Amen? Amen. There is a place you get with God that actually moves things. Now, I, I'll be the first to admit, you know, I've had God answer prayers before I even prayed them. You Have you? Amen. Amen. You know, I just, it just crossed my mind. I think I'm going to pray about this. And then, boop. Yes. You know, I've seen it happen. Praise God. Amen. And I've, I've uh, you know, I've probably gotten prayers out of my mouth and had an answer. Have you? You have? I know you have. Yeah. You have. And there's things that I've been praying for for years. Yeah, right. And I still haven't seen them. Right. Amen. Amen. But you know what? I, I haven't given up. That's right. Just because I haven't seen it immediately. There's some things when you plant a garden... Some things come up immediately, yeah. Right. And there's just a diverse. You didn't have to plant some things in a different season, even. Amen. Amen. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I love okra. Mm. You know? Yeah. yeah. But you know what? It takes quite a while to get okra coming up and bringing fruit. Yeah. You know? And uh, I like greens, too, but they come up real quick. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but there's some things that. You know, it takes a while. And that's the way I believe prayer is. Yeah. Amen. There's prayers, no doubt, that Daniel prayed promptly and got answers to. And then there was the time whenever he prayed and fasted for 21 days. Yes. And the, the angel was sent to him and told him, from the first day you chastened yourself and you, you know, sought the Lord and your prayer was heard. Amen. But there was that unseen thing going on. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. There was that unseen thing. We just got to talking about it. That war, evidently, was going on. Right? right? Yeah. Uh, another prince, I take it a dark prince, yeah. over a region or something, was resisting. Yeah. Amen. And, 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 but you know what? Uh, Nonetheless, the prayer got through. Amen. And we got to realize that, you know. I've heard people say, 
If you prayed more than once, you can have faith when you pray. Well, I'm sorry, that's not the way this works. Right. Jesus himself prayed three times mm -hmm. in the garden. Yeah, Let this cup pass for, from me. Yeah. He prayed that. He, and he said, nevertheless, not as I will, but thine be done. Amen. Will of God be done, right? Right. Amen. Amen. Elijah prayed seven times before he saw results. Yes, yeah, correct. Amen. He prayed, and evidently he looked, nothing was happening. Prayed again. Until the seventh time, and then he saw a, a cloud the size of a man's hand. That's not much of a thunderstorm, folks, right. in men's eyes. Yeah. But I guess after you had to see one for three and a half years, Come on. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. what he said, you know, I hear the sound of abundance of rain. Mm -hmm. Amen. And sure enough, you know, it turned into something tremendous. Right. Praise God. <clears throat> By the way, he was also the one that prayed and shut them up. Yes, sir. Yeah. Shut the heavens up. Praise God. But prayer, serious prayer. Yes. I'm talking about coming from the inside. Mm -hmm. You know, you can look at Hannah. Only go. her lips moved, but her right. voice was not heard. Right. She was she was very, very green <laughs> inside, burdened, you know. She had an adversary that had been buffeting her because she was childless. And it just got to a point where she went to the house of God and was praying to the point her words were not even being heard. Her, her, her lips were moving. Right. But the priest thought she was drunk. Amen. That's pretty intense prayer, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And you know what? She got a petition. Yes. Amen. That's when Samuel was born like a year later. You know, and she had been barren all those years. Not only that, but she had children after that. Yeah. Amen. Prayer changes things. Amen. Yeah. But not it, it, it's it, we're talking about serious depth of prayer. Amen. Right. Yeah. To where concern drives you. Right. Amen. Amen. We're talking about whenever you or somebody you know are, you know, something drives you with care to the throne of God to the point you move beyond just the casual prayer. Amen. Right. And it moves you into that place to where you're praying in the spirit. Amen. Amen. Praise God. You can expect things to happen when you move into that place. Amen. Again, it may not be quick. Sometimes it is quick. Yeah. But when you move into that place of prayer, Amen. Thank you, Lord. Things change. Yeah. You get answers. Amen. Amen. I remember one time, I've said this before, but I do remember one time whenever, uh, you know, uh, I got word the same day. I guess it was the evil day. Not Nothing that I was going through, but being a pastor, you know, it's very serious to me. I take it very serious whenever God's people are going through very, very, very severe things. Mm -hmm. You know? And the same day, two different people, totally different issues. I mean, one of them was the husband was going to burn the wife's dress off. An unbelieving husband, no doubt. Mm -hmm. And another one was a a health issue with this one person in our church, nobody here today, but was going through tremendous, serious, big serious bleeding issues, you know, losing blood and stuff, serious. And I received information in the evening, everybody in my house went to bed, and I stayed up and I started praying because these were things that needed immediate, I'm talking about immediate attention. These were very <laughs> serious issues. And uh, I was walking the hall. I remember I was walking the hall. We had a hall in the house we was living at that time. 
And I was praying, like all my family was in bed asleep, and I was walking and I was praying and I was taking it to the Lord and I was serious praying. Yeah. And I was in and I was really had my heart in praying that, you know, God, we need uh, something to happen. Something needs to change, you know. And I was praying, and I don't know how long I prayed. I might have been praying a couple of hours or something. I didn't put a time clock on it, but it was kind of, and as I was praying, as I was walking, I was walking down that hall, and, and I was praying, walking, and, and then all of a sudden, it's like, you know, it's just that, it's just that, I didn't hear an audible voice, it's just, I knew I was through praying. Amen. And there was nothing disturbing left inside of me. No disturbance inside of me. Whenever you get through, there's like that release. Yeah. And there's that disturbance is gone. Or, or you know it's in the hands of the Lord, right? Amen. Yeah, right. You know he just took it from you. Yeah. Right? Amen. Or maybe you released it to him. I don't know what it is. Kind of like the woman with the issue of blood. You know, she pressed her way through the crowd. And when she touched the hem of Jesus' garment, she felt within herself. She was yeah. made over. Right? Amen. She knew it inside. Amen. She knew it inside. Right. And uh, that happened. The next morning, I got a call from an elderly sister that lived in another town that I, she had never done this before. In fact, I seen her a couple of years after that. A few years after that. I don't know exactly how long. And she told me she'd never had that happen to her before. She'd never done that before. And I hadn't seen her, and I don't know when, but she was a person that walked with God. And, Amen. you know, she was one that, was, she had a prayer walk with God. I mean, she, she was a, a warrior for the Lord. And, uh, but she, she called me, she said, Brother Adam, the Lord gave me two scriptures to give you this morning. And uh, I'd have to dig the scriptures out. But they were Old Testament scriptures. You know, telling me to be courageous and strong and confident, basically, and and you know, assuring me. And after she got through calling, I got the reports that both of those things were taken care of. Amen. Both of them. Amen. You know, they came one day and they were gone one day. Amen. Amen. And it all had to do with praying in the spirit. That's, right. That's what it had to do with. One of my favorite is people in the Bible. You know, you like Daniel? I like Daniel. I like Samuel. Yeah. You know? I like Joseph yeah. and all that. But this is one of the the most greatest persons in the Bible in my book. It's found in Luke chapter 2, verse 36. I love this lady here. I believe we need some ladies, not just ladies, but men too. People like this lady right here. And there was one Anna, a prophetess, the daughter of Phineal. I don't know if I said his name right. Of the tribe of Asher, she was of great age and had lived with a husband seven years from her virginity. That means she kept herself when she was young, didn't she? And then she finally got married, right? Yeah. We don't have the age how old she was when she got married. What would y'all think was the youngest age for her to get married? Minimum. Huh? 15? Okay, we'll use 15. You know, that's a little young for me. But in the biblical days, they did stuff like that. Yeah. Right? They did. Yeah. They did. <clears throat> you know, we'll just say 15. Praise God. She lived with her husband. Praise God. I've got to find my place now. For seven years. Amen. Yeah. She, with a husband seven years from her virginity. So he had seven years under 15, right? Mm -hmm. 22, and he dies. Because the next verse says that she was a widow. So she, she was with her husband for seven years, right? Yeah. Right? You know being right? Yeah. She was a widow of about four score, which is 80, and four years. 80 and 4 years. Now, that could be saying that she was 84 years old. 
But I don't think that's what it's saying. It I'm may be. And that's, that's fine if that's what it's saying. But I think that it's saying from the time she became a widow, she yes. lived 84 more years. Yes. At the time that this was being reported of about her. Yeah. So how old was she be? 100 and something. <laughs> I'm just a kid compared to her. I don't, is there anybody in here that's over 100 years old? My mother just turned 90. Sister Cooper turned 90. Sister Cooper's just a little bit older than my mother. You know? That's the oldest ones I think we have in our, in our bunch. But here she is. She's either 84 years old or if it's the other way, she's past 100 years old. Man. Probably 106 Something like, like that. that. You know, we have to just guess because we don't know how old she was before she got married. That's a that's a, quite a bit of age in it. Yeah. This woman has not finished serving God though. Right. Amen. She has not thrown in the towel and started knitting the rest of her days. Right. She might have knitted too. You know. But she had something she spent her time doing. Amen. She was a widow. I'm telling you, this is one of my favorites of the Bible. She was a widow about four score years. Depart she departed not from the temple, but did what? Served, served God. God. Had she served God? She, you're too yes. old to get out and knock doors. She probably, I mean, she probably could. Don't her. But, Back again. Huh? She served God night and day. She served God with fasting. Yes, and prayers night and day. This was actually her way of serving God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. You know, you can get to a point where you can't do a whole lot of physical stuff. Right. <laughs> Listen to me. But that don't mean you have to give up and you become a nobody. Right. Amen. You can do your greatest work in your older years. You can. If you become a person... Of prayer. Amen. Amen. Yeah. She served God with fastings and prayer night and day. And she coming in that instant gave thanks likewise unto the Lord. This is at the birth of Jesus. And spake of him to all them that looked for redemption in Jerusalem. She was a prophetess. No doubt because she was a person of prayer and fasting. Yeah, right. She was serving <coughs> God even up in Years. Now, I, I, I got this together a few days ago, and you know what my mother, my mother, when I went to her house, see, I've been, the last two months I've been staying the night with her. Because I spent a half day at my house and a half day at my mother's, you know, because she's way out in the country. Stay for good morning. She stays way out in the country by herself, you know. And I already had this together. You're talking about God's timing. You know? And I walked in, and, and she was sitting in her chair. My sister got a real comfortable chair where she can kind of rock a little bit, you know. And uh, she said, she said to me, she said, I ain't any good anymore. She said, I got up to make a meatloaf. And she said, I was plum exhausted and my back was killing me. I just ain't worth nothing anymore. She said, I need to go to a nursing home. Just be in a nursing home. And I told her, I said, Mom, you can, you can serve God. <laughs> you got a way that you can still serve God. You're not just ready for a nursing home and to give up because your greatest days can be even though you physically can't do a lot, if you can pray, you can move mountains. Yeah. You can move mountains. And there are things, some of, you know, I can't do what I used to be able to do physically. Amen. Some of you can't do what you used to do physically, but you can do a lot if you can realize, see the devil would like to minimize Prayer to you. Yes. 
Amen. He would like you to think it doesn't work and, and you're just going through the motion. But I'm here to tell you, you're doing something amen, that is tremendous whenever you are a person of prayer. Amen. amen. Anna was probably over 100 years old and still serving God because, not because she was out knocking doors or evangelizing, but because she was a person that knew how to get a hold of God. Amen. And I don't think she was doing it just for her. I think she had a burden on her heart for God's people, God's cause. Yeah. There's a lot of people who got things happening to them good by that woman's prayers, I believe. Yeah. Amen? Amen? She's one of my favorites in the Bible. She served God with fasting and prayer night and day. Amen? <clears throat> Praise God again. Going back to Hannah. You know, you can even get to a place where you can't audibly say things. Right. But you know what? God heard Hannah's heart was coming out of her. Yeah. Amen? Amen? If you get to the place where you physically can't do anything, you can still do something. Yeah. Because God can hear. He hears. He doesn't look on the outside, it says. He looks on the heart. Amen. He knows what is the mind of the spirit. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. When it becomes intent, you know, yeah. with earnestness. Praise God. Psalms 92. I love this scripture. here too. Psalms 92 and 12 through 15. The righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Those that be planted. I like that word. I like to plant stuff. But those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Yeah. Planted. You know what you do when you plant something? Yeah. It becomes rooted. Yeah. Right? If you don't ever plant it, it's not going to become rooted. Right? right? Yeah. You leave a, 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 a plant that's not actually planted, it'll end up dying. Yeah. That's what's too, so wrong with too many people's walk with God. They're not planted. Amen. If you're going to flourish, you've got to be planted. And it matters where you're planted. Yes. You know, the Bible says, those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Listen to this. They shall still bring forth fruit in old age. <laughs> Amen. They're still going to be producing. That's what, that's what Anna was doing. She was still producing. Yeah. Even when she got old, she might not physically could have done some of the things she once did, but she's still bringing forth fruit. Right. And you know what? That's what Jesus was looking for. Isn't it? Yeah. Whenever he went to the fig tree as he was heading to Jerusalem, he looked on it from a distance and it had leaves. Yeah. And as he drew, he drew near to it, he was expecting you to get some something to eat off of it. But when he walked up to it, he, I guess he moved around a little bit of the leaves there. He wasn't interested in eating leaves. He was looking for fruit. Yeah. It's not enough just to look the part of a Christian, right? Yeah. We need to have those things that please God where he can, when he comes our way, amen, he gets fruit off of us. Right. And those that are planted, you got to be planted in the house of the Lord though. Yeah. Right? Amen. We don't want to be one of those wandering stars that Jude was talking about. Right. He called them wandering stars. They're never planted. If you're a wandering star, you're never planted. You've got to become planted yeah. in the house of the Lord. That's when you bring forth fruit. Amen? Yeah. Praise God. Even in old age, you, you will bring forth fruit in your old age. They shall be fat and flourishing. Amen. Praise God. We don't need to be physically fat, but it would be good for us to be spiritually fat. <laughs> a lot of us have fulfilled that scripture. What is it? The Malachi, where they shall grow up as fat in Kansas and all. Praise God. At least I fall into that category. Y'all are doing better, I'm sure. Praise God. 
Amen. But they're going to still be bringing forth fruit in the old age. They shall be fat and flourishing. And there's a reason behind that. To show that the Lord is upright. He is my rock. And there's no unrighteousness in him. I'm running out of time. Praise God. Amen. We're going to turn to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. I read these scriptures, some of these the other day. But it's Paul admonishing the Christians. Praise God. Amen. Verse 14, 1 Thessalonians 5, 14. Paul tells these Christians, he says, Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, be patient toward all men. See that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. Rejoice evermore. He don't want you hanging your head down and being down and out all the time, does he? You've got a reason to rejoice. The next one says, pray without ceasing. Amen. You can look at a couple of different things in Luke. I won't turn there. But mention Luke 18, 1 through 8. You can look for that, that, that yourself later if you want to. And then Luke 11, 5 through 13. Jesus in Luke 18, he said, to this intent, he, he, he spake that uh, men should ought to always pray and never to faint. Jesus taught that. And then he gave the scenario of the judge and the widow and the unjust judge. <laughs> Amen. And how she came to that judge and she had an adversary. And she said to that judge, avenge me and my adversary. He wouldn't do it for a while. But to get her off his back, he said, if I don't do this, she's going to keep coming. Persistence. Yeah. Persistence. And Jesus gave the story concerning prayer. Right. He was trying to make a point. Persistence. Right. Don't stop. Right? right? Keep coming. And he wasn't comparing himself to an unjust judge right. because he's not an unjust judge. Right. He was just taking two scenarios a widow, which in those days was considered the weakest of all of humanity. And an unjust judge was just the opposite of who God is. Right. And if she could accomplish getting an unjust judge to do something for her, how much more can you, being one of his children, can get the good God of heaven to do something for you? Right? right? right. And he's encouraging us to continue right. praying. Right. Don't stop praying. That's what Paul is talking about here. Pray without ceasing. It doesn't mean... 24 sevens, you're you're uttering nothing but prayer because sometimes you gotta stop and do a little work and you gotta use your mind for something to do your job, you know. I can just see Mama in there giving somebody a shot or something like that, and she's praying, but you know, she's not paying attention to what she's doing with the with one of her people that she's taking care of. Oh, I, I'm sorry, I gave you something totally different. Oops. You know, you gotta get your mind on things. That's, that's not what he's saying. I do believe that we should always be have you know be away uh, a moment away from praying about something. But we do have to operate, and you know, yeah. mom's got to feed her kids, and dad's got to go to work and work on a job and take <laughs> measurements sometimes, or, or work on an automobile, litter back there, you know, and, and and do things. So we got to busy ourselves. But what he's saying is, don't stop. Having a prayer life. Right. Don't. Well, I prayed at church Sunday. Well, I prayed at the, at, at the next Sunday's church too. That's what we're talking about. If this is all that you do for God in your life, you're not going to grow. No. Yeah. You're not going to have power with God in your life. 
All this right here is to help you when you go out there, you can put it into action. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So you can have, you can be built up and you can know how to walk with God. This is the, I'm trying to provoke you to good works. Amen? Right. Have a prayer life. Have a prayer life. Mm -hmm. Put it into action. What we're talking about here. Have Bible reading, not just on Sunday, but have it daily in your life. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. Praise God, because then it will benefit you. Amen. Amen. If if you eat on Sunday and you don't eat again for the until the next Sunday, you're gonna be a more weak person. Amen. Right? Amen. Seven days without prayer makes one week. Yeah. You seen that before? Yeah. Yeah. Seven days without prayer makes one week. Yeah. yeah. I had to go daily was praying because yeah. I'd be a monster. <laughs> you know? I'd be a monster. I had to find out my flesh is not good, folks. Right. My flesh. Yeah. And we all have that. Some of y'all are, are just way better than I am, I'm sure. But I... And a monster without God. I'm telling you, I can really have an attitude. You know? He has changed me. And you know what? He does you too. He does you too. But we need to pray. I'm watching the clock. Praise God. Amen. The other scripture, oh, before I leave that unjust judging and the widow, the very last verse, I think it's verse 8. When he, before he changed his topic, the very last verse he, verse, he says, Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, and he's coming, folks, listen to me. Yeah. When the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith yeah. on the earth? He didn't say he wouldn't find faith on earth, because it's a question. When the Son of Man cometh, why would he talk about prayer and do all of that and then finish off with that verse? But you know what I believe that he's trying to make us think about? If you stop believing that God answers prayers, you're going to stop praying. Yeah. It's only if you believe prayer works. Right. That it is beneficial. That it really does stuff. That's the, when you really are convinced that God is hearing you, you really do believe that God is here. You're going to find yourself praying. Right. You are. When the more you're convinced about that, the more you're going to find yourself reaching out to him. And the less you believe that, the less you're going to pray. Yeah. True. Amen. And I think about this right here. You know, Jesus, throughout the word of God, Old and New Testament, you will find out that God is a God that is very, very much against things that are vain. Yeah. Amen. You know what vain is? He hates you people to pray to idols because it's vain. Yeah. Right? All that kind of stuff. <clears throat> he teaches against vain things. Vain means something that's useless, worthless, right. of no value. That's something that's vain. When you have something that's vain, kind of like those mirrors, you know, they call them vanities. That's where people go make their stuff bang. <laughs> it is. That's why it's called a vanity. It's vain. God doesn't want us to be fake. He wants us to be real. Amen. And he made you pretty enough. As you are. Or like I got corrected. One of the kids. I can't remember who it was. Lily. Probably. Or George. I told I told Liz that one of the boys was pretty. And she said, Boys ain't pretty as grandpa. You're <laughs> handsome. <laughs> <laughs> I said, Thank you for cracking me your right. <laughs> you know? But but God doesn't like vain things. And yet you read the scriptures, he continuously teaches you to pray. He gives examples. Pray, pray, pray. Yeah. Don't stop praying. Watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. He told his disciples at the Garden of Gethsemane. You know, pray that you may be accounted worthy to escape all the things that's going to come up on the earth and to stand.
stand before the Son of Man. Pray, pray, pray. Right. Would he Amen. teach us something that was worthless and useless and didn't work? No. He taught us to do that because it does work. Right. Amen. Because it is powerful. Amen. It works. Yeah, yeah you got to wait some time. Yeah. You need to be persistent. And you know what? You need to be driven by concern. You need to see those reports of those people in Ukraine right now. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And look beyond your world. Amen. Sometimes our world are just all wrapped up about us. Yes. There's a lot happening outside of our worlds. Yeah. Amen. Our immediate. Yeah, we got needs. When I was a young Christian. The Lord kind of rebuked me because I found myself praying about me. We do that a lot of times when we first get started. You know, I had a lot of hang-ups. Probably still got a bunch. Probably not to have. But I realized I had to get this thing flipped around. It's what I needed to do is start paying attention to other people's needs. Amen. Amen. And oh, what a revelation I got when I started being burdened for what other people were going through. I'm telling you, that's where it's at, folks. And you know what? I found out when I, when I instead of just, just focusing on me, when I started focusing my prayers on the concerns of others, I'm talking about really being burdened about it. You know, praying. To the point that I spend time. Sometimes I even cry. You get in those places where you cry sometimes? Amen. You know? Sometimes you just, you don't have the words to say. It's just, ah, oh, oh, I don't know how to say, Lord, what I feel. You ever get to that point? You ever been there? Yeah. I know yeah. you have. Yeah. You know what? Even though you may not know what to say, the Lord understands what your spirit says. Yes. He does. Yes. It says that. He knows what is the mind of the spirit. Yes. He searched the hearts and he knows what is the mind of the spirit. Yes. You need to do that. We need to do that. When you see these reports, hear these reports, look beyond your world. Look at what these people are going through. And look what these people are going through. And be burdened. You know, be burdened. Then. You know, you can tell when you get really burdened because you don't even concern about eating. You know, you want to... Your concern is so much, there's things that's more important than that. You know, and I'm going to tell you something. When you get in that place, you can do things in prayer. Amen. I said, you can do things in prayer. Things can happen. And you know what? The Lord, he allows us to gain knowledge about certain situations. Not so that necessarily we can go and, you know, did you know what sister so-and-so was going through? Or brother so-and-so was going through? I just found out. If God shows you something, it's not so you can go around and pray. It's so you, you pray. can be burdened with them. And go to God in prayer. Go to God in prayer. He's trusted you with that. He's trusted you with that. So that you, because you know what? He's going to take your prayer and he's going to work through your prayer. The best thing I, I'm, a, I'm past my time. But the best reason, thing that I can come up with, the reason why God requires prayer to be enacted, is because whenever you start praying for other people, it teaches you and it brings you to be concerned about other people and ultimately ends to loving people. And that's what God is about. Loving people. Loving yeah. one another. Caring for one another. That's, that's why we're involved in it. Right. And he doesn't just do it without your help. Yeah. He, he does it through you because he brings people together right. to caring about one another because care comes from love. 
Amen. Amen. And that's what God is wanting in our lives. Amen. Oh my goodness. You better stand and get your drink. And go to the restroom. And Amen. Do whatever you need to do there. We'll re get, re uh, get started here again in just a moment.